There are aspects of Zhuang that I find attractive. It's just not the wardrobe. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Allie. Today's topic of discussion is Twinkle Love, season four, episodes one, two, and three. I finally understand what watching an entertaining dating show without drama is really like. I think they picked a really good mix of extroverts and introverts because everyone is really proactive and not boring. I think they hired a really good casting director because everyone has a personality. Yeah, perhaps the interview questions were just like a level up. Maybe they were like, hey, are you gonna be proactive or are you gonna be boring? And they chose everyone who was gonna be proactive. As Twinkle Love is my first Chinese dating show that I've watched, I couldn't help but compare it to the Korean dating shows that I've seen. And one thing I really don't love is how much screen time the panelists have. I'm sorry. I know Shen Yu is from Meteor Garden and t tell me how I didn't notice or realize until like episode three. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's from Meteor Garden. I love Meteor Garden. And I don't really want the panelists opinion to affect my opinion. So that's why I kind of just skip what the panelists have to say. Another thing that I found different, but I really liked this change when I was watching was when the contestants confess their feelings to someone, everyone is watching the person's reaction. Like they're sitting and then the person puts the earplugs in and they listen to the voicemail, but everyone is watching. What I like about this though is that the person giving the voice message is able to ask a question and the person who is receiving the message then is able to reply. An example is in episode three when they're doing the voicemail reveal and Leon sends a voicemail to Zhu and he asks her what characteristics she likes about him and what characteristics she likes about her crush in the house. And he says, but refer to me as Hei and him as Bei. So Zhu is able to say what her answer is while Leon is the only one who knows what she is talking about. After watching episode three, I kind of started watching <laughs> episode four because I couldn't stop, I told you. I, I was on a binge, I couldn't stop. So I saw the beginning of episode four and I liked that there was also a random date where all the men were blindfolded and they didn't know which girl was on the truck. They're gonna do like a prom thing, they're gonna do dancing. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen episode four yet, but I liked the fact that it was a random date so that we don't continuously see the same couples all the time. It's a safari date and Sai and Ju are on this date. Then they are given the option midway through to switch it up and Sai does say yes. So he ends up going on a date with Chu while Zhuang then gets switched up with Ju. Something else that I noticed was that in Korean dating shows, they openly drink alcohol. And I think it might just be because of the cultural differences, but in Twinkle Love, they're just like not drinking. Like, I don't know if they are or if they aren't, or if they're just not open about it. Maybe it's like not that cute in the culture to do on TV. I don't know, but they just aren't drinking alcohol. One last thing about the differences I noticed compared to a Korean dating show was that at the beginning when they're doing introductions in a Chinese dating show, I don't know if it's just for Twinkle Love or if it's for all Chinese dating shows, but they openly say like what their major is and what their age is. And I think that this is helpful. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't wanna be 30 falling in love with a 20 year old. And then in the middle of the whole thing, I find out that he's 20. Like it just, it, it's a waste of my time. I think, but I also understand why they do that in Korean dating shows. It's to like not have a bias on someone. And also maybe it's the culture too, right? Because in Korea, it's like, if someone's older than you, then you have to like give them a lot more respect. So I guess they do that for cultural reasons. I'm not too sure, but I do like how at the beginning of Twinkle Love, I knew everyone's age. I knew what their major was. Like it was, it was, it was like not a secret. Now for the contestants and couples that I want to discuss, let's talk about Zhuang first because am I the only one who could not take Zhuang seriously? Like right from the get-go, I'm like, what? 
I, who let this child in? Like who, like what's, what's the minimum age to be on this show? Because this guy is very young. And then I kept thinking, okay, he's playful. Honestly, I think his personality kind of grew on me a little bit. However, as a love interest, I could not take him seriously. Like at best, at best, I would have friend zoned him. And at worst, I would have family zoned him. Like what side did to chew when he's like, yeah. She's like my little sister. Zhuang is definitely little brother material. I did start to appreciate Zhuang's personality a little bit more after watching his interactions with Ching and he, he's got some game. He's got some sw- I was gonna say swag, but I, again, these are things that I can't take seriously. Like the shoes, what episode was it? Episode three, those plushy shoes. No, thank you. No, like my man, first and foremost, will not be wearing those shoes out in public. Again, I don't mean to be like ripping Zhuang's swag apart, but like someone needs to tell him to, I, I don't know, man. I guess some girls like it. I guess some, I need to stop. Okay, some girls like it, that's fine. But Zhuang does have game when he likes a girl. Let's talk about when he likes a girl because when he doesn't like a girl, I feel like he would treat her the way he treats Chu. Chu and Zhuang. This was a couple I didn't really see coming because he doesn't like her. <laughs> like, he doesn't like her. So I don't know why Chu is doing this. I don't know why she started liking him after the safari date. The reasons are unknown to me. She says that she feels comfortable. She says she feels relaxed around him. Babe, I think it's because he doesn't like you. Unless a lot of their interactions were edited out, Zhuang didn't look like he gave two shits about what Chu was talking about during the safari date compared to the conversation that Zhuang has with Qing when they were picking out the flowers. He always gives Qing attention. It's just so much more obvious that he's very much into Qing. And <sighs> later in the episodes, Chu does mention that she feels more relaxed with Zhuang compared to her date with Mu. But aesthetically, her ideal type would have been Mu. Really quickly, I just love, I love Mu so much. He's so freaking beautiful. Like, yeah, aesthetically, he's also my type too. Like he looks like he would be everyone's type. Okay, anyway, Mu gets a voice message from Chu and she mentions that she knows that he kind of got into that date with her that first night because it was like happenstance. He lost a rock, paper, scissors match and so he was on the date with Chu. And she says, if you would choose again, who would you want to go with? For one, it means her. For two, it means Zhu, and if he puts up three, it means he would rather go with Qing. And he does put up his three fingers, showing that he would have rather gone with Qing, and that's great because now Chu can happily move on. Unlike the mixed signals that I'm getting from Zhuang, because one thing is for certain, he is very much into Qing at this point of the show. From episodes one to episodes three, he very much wants to have a chance with Ching and he talks about deep things with her. He talks about first impressions with her. He always tells her how beautiful she is, how perfect she is. And he doesn't say those same things to Chu, but then he kind of gives Chu false hope whenever she leaves him a voice message. In episode two, Chu gives Zhuang a voice message and she tells him that she realized that during the game of Truth or Dare, he tapped someone else's shoulders because he likes someone else. So she's asking him if they had more time today, if he would change his choice. If yes, he should look at her in the eyes for 10 seconds. And when she said this, when he, when he hears this message, I already knew that she meant 
stay where you are and stare at her from where you are. Oh my God. He does like, oh my goodness. It was so embarrassing. I Maybe it's romantic. Maybe it's romantic, but please, please never do this to me. Never do this to me. He asks her to step up and they stare into each other's eyes in front of everyone. I mean, this could be romantic. It could be romantic. Comment down below if you thought it was romantic. I, for one, would feel so embarrassed. I'd be like, why? Why did, why did I put myself in this situation? But Chu liked it. Chu liked it. I mean, it's all, it's all about what she wants. She likes him. And he does this to show that, I don't know, she has a chance. When I truly believe that he's giving her false hope at this point. I don't think Shu Wang is a bad person. I do think perhaps he's just really nice. Like he, it's hard for him to reject someone. Or two, he's keeping his options open, which is probably safe right now, especially with how well things are going with Ching and Mu. So maybe he needs a backup plan. I don't know. In episode three, we see the group date with Wen, Chu, and Zhuang, and they're doing like a Muay Thai class. It just solidified so much uh, how Chu is just like begging for Zhuang's attention. And it was, oh, I hate it. I hate it to watch my girl do that. She's like in the car. She's asking Zhuang like, hey, why aren't you looking at us? Like, why don't you look at this side of the window? And I just hate to watch her beg for him to give her the attention that she wants. Like he clearly sees them as like friends. And I think she might just be in denial thinking that her persistence will change his mind because he does give her mixed signals whenever she leaves him a voice message. He always replies with like the action or response that shows and indicates that he's also interested in her. But when going out on dates, it just doesn't show. Let me know what you guys thought about Zhuang and Chu's potential relationship. Let's talk about the difference of how Zhuang treats Ching compared to the way that he had been treating Chu in like the examples that I just talked about. So in episode one, part two, Tsai, Zhuang, and Ching go on a group date and they are picking out flowers. Ching says that she wants like these flowers in the bouquet that they're creating and Tsai is like, no. no those are not the flowers we're using. <laughs> we're gonna talk about Tsai after, but anyways. Zhuang really cares about what Ching thinks and how she feels. He can tell that she's upset. So he validates her feelings and he's like, hey, like these are actually really good flowers. Like let's use them. And he really convinces Tsai, tsai to include those flowers into the bouquet. Let's fast forward when Tsai is getting them food once they have finished their little mission thing of making a bouquet. So now it's Zhuang and Ching talking to each other. They're talking about first impressions. After they have this moment, Sai comes back with the food and Zhuang is just so careful with Ching. Like you can tell how much effort he puts into taking care of her. And I really love that side of him. Fast forward to the night when they're listening to voicemails, voice messages, Zhuang gets a message from Ching and she apologizes for coming off as critical towards him. And his response out loud is that perfect things don't need to apologize. So he's basically calling her perfect, which I did find romantic. So there are aspects of Zhuang that I find attractive. It's just not the wardrobe. <laughs> Even though Ching and Zhuang had that moment on their date, Mu ends up giving his voice message to Ching when he was on his date with Chu. So I feel that when she received this voice message from Mu, it was like her turning point to go for Mu. She asks Mu to take a picture with her, but the film is out. She does remove her picture with Sai from the other day and she gives a smile to Mu. So I do believe that Ching and Mu are going to be going strong. In episode two, part two, Ching gets a message from Zhuang and he asks her if she had more fun yesterday with him 
or today at the zoo with Mu and Wen. She does give him the signal to show that she had more fun yesterday, but I do believe that she had done this because it was just really awkward with Wen and Mu both fighting for her attention. Again, nothing is wrong with Wen. I just don't think Ching likes him like that and it might have just made her comfortable with how competitive they were. I do believe that Ching tries to show Zhuang that she doesn't like him in that sense anymore or that she's not interested. Maybe before she was and now she's not because in episode 3 part 2, Ching hears another message from Zhuang and I thought it was really beautiful because he plays her a piano piece and he tells her if she thinks that he had paired them up together for the group date and she answers with no. So I think this was her trying to say that, hey, like I actually don't think you're that much interested in me and I'm not really interested in you. Tell me what you guys think about Ching and Zhuang's relationship. I don't think Ching is leading Zhuang on. She doesn't really give him romantic vibes. I don't think she flirts with Zhuang as much as she outwardly shows Mu that she is continuously choosing him. Okay, moving on to Tsai and Zhu. Firstly, I love both of them individually. Like for first impressions, Zhu was like my first impression female lead. I really loved her. I think she carries on a conversation really well. She flirts really well. And I think that she's funny. Who the heck has a talent where you eat a lemon without a facial expression? She's so freaking cute. Next, for Tsai. I definitely 100% get control freak vibes. He just loves to be the leader. He loves to take control of a situation. That example with the flower bouquet, his group date with... Ching and Zhuang, that was like not very cute of him to just totally reject Ching's opinion. That's fine. I can tell that he has a strong personality and he likes to take the lead. They had a photo shoot date and Zhu admits to him in a voice message that she sends him that night that she didn't really like it. She wasn't really having fun and it's because she thought that a lot of his poses were tacky. She didn't like what he was telling her to do. And so, you know, how is he supposed to know unless she says something, right? So I was really happy that she does mention it and he does apologize. Another thing that I liked about Tsai was when Lun first came into the house, I can tell that he has really good manners because when he sees her, he takes off his sunglasses when he introduces himself. And then when everyone else comes in, like he's super welcoming with introducing her to everyone. And I don't know, I, I do like Sai. He does have qualities that I don't love, like being a control freak and stuff, but we love a man who knows what he wants. I predict that Sai and Zhu will go a long way. I don't know. It's my first season of watching Twinkle Love, so I don't know if it's like, oh my god, all of a sudden, like, the couples have switched. Like, I don't know if it's that kind of thing, but I do see Sai and Zhu getting along really well because he does say outwardly that they have so much in common. He even says, like, they have, like, encrypted communication. They have really great communication skills. And again, she always tells him what she doesn't like. And he's really open about sharing his feelings that he has towards her. Quickly, about when I really like him. I love a dinosaur face guy. I love how assertive he was in trying to get Ching's attention during the group date with Mu. I also love how straightforward he was with Chu. He tells her in the voice message that, hey, like I actually wanted to be on a date with you. And the next day he does try to show her that he wants to go on a date with her. And then she changes her group. Like she, <laughs> she definitely does not like when because when they were on the same group, she's like, hey, does anyone want to switch with me? Which is fine. Honestly, it's a dating show. If you don't like him, don't waste anyone's time. I also loved how straightforward Chu was in rejecting Wen when he asks her, like, when you came back from your date, did you have a lot of fun because of your date? 
because you were with your crush or because of the animals. If it's because of the animals, like scream out your favorite animal. And when she hangs up, she doesn't say anything. She just sits down. So that was like a really big statement for her to tell Wen that she's not interested in him. And so I'm like, after that, I just continuously am rooting for him. But I don't think, I just don't think he's going to find anyone in the house. I don't know. He has a lot of competition. Let's talk about Leanne. I don't have much to say about him. So far, I've seen like an episode and a half about him. I don't know. Maybe it's been like half an episode. He's not really my type. <laughs> Let me just talk about like superficial stuff because I don't really know his personality. He's like meh. He tried really hard during his first date with all the women, which was great. We want to see a guy trying. We want to see a guy put in the effort. But like what one of the panelists said, they're like, oh my gosh, how is he going to up this? Because he's done so much on the first date. Lastly, let's talk about Lun because she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. She's very straightforward. But I find that if she was talking to the wrong person, she might come off as rude or pretentious. Like... She's not really, oh, she's an introvert. Yeah, I think I just remembered. She's an introvert, so I don't know. Sometimes she could come off as, I don't want to say snobby. I said it. She kind of comes off as snobby a little bit, but I think it's because I haven't seen her personality enough. It was just the first impression. One of my favorite scenes was when Lun first comes in and all the men agree that, hey, you're a psychology major. Let's pretend that you can guess all of our favorite flowers. Like all of the guys agree, oh my gosh, let's pretend she like reads minds or she's so good at her psychology major. She knows what flowers we like just by asking us other questions. Anyway, it was really lighthearted and I loved that everyone was in on it to make her look good and make her look even more impressive. In the end, I do predict that Lun and Lian will get together and I don't know, maybe they'll add another girl for when. Just maybe. Anyway, those are all my thoughts on Twinkle Love Season 4 Episodes 1 to 3. And let me know if you're watching it too or if you've already seen it. No spoilers, please. I love you and I will see you in my next video. Bye.